What's good people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below, smash the like, hit the bell, all that good stuff, man, because today I got a bang episode for you guys. A lot of people have been going to all types of mediums. I recently tried some cocoa. I'm talking pure 100% organic cocoa. Perfect. And that's what I've been growing in, man, but I learned a lot with that run simply because growing in cocoa is a little bit different from growing in soil. Bruh. Now, all you guys know, I'm a living soil type of guy. I love the taste. I love the ease of growing. I just, I just love the organic stuff. But it's always good to learn about different styles of growing. So I went for the pure organic cocoa route. And by pure organic, that means there's no soil in there. There's no peat moss in there. There's nothing else in there except for this organic cocoa. I also add a little bit of perlite, so maybe that's a little bit of a cheat. But it's nothing organic in that perlite. Well, maybe perlite is organic. I don't even know. But fuck it. Anyway, I just add the perlite for a little bit of drainage and aeration. That's all it was. Just so that the roots can have a little bit of space to grow. I went with like, I'll say about a 70. 30 mix, 30% perlite, 70% pure organic cocoa. But like I said, I learned a lot, so I want to share with you guys exactly what I learned. So if any of you guys are thinking of growing in cocoa, you can find out what are the true benefits to it, because there are a lot of benefits, but there are also a few things that you need to be aware of, because this stuff feels so damn good, and your plants absolutely love it, man. So without further ado, smash the like, hit the bell, and let's get into today's episode. <laughs> Yes, guys. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, well, Matt, what's the difference between cocoa and soil? Well, there's a few differences, and a few differences that can make all the difference, if you ask Bruh. me. Now, even though a lot of people just call it cocoa, it's really called cocoa coal. And it's pretty much a natural cocoa fiber, which is extracted from the outer husk of a coconut. And it's not limited to growing mediums, because people use those in things like floor mats, doormats, brushes, mattresses, all sorts of stuff. But when we're talking about the actual core itself, the actual core is the fibrous material found between the hard internal shell and the outer shell so that's what you guys need to know hard interior shell outer shell this is what comes in between now cocoa as a growing medium is fantastic you can grab it in massive bags you can grab small bags but it's super cost effective there are a few benefits guys this bag is a lot lighter than your typical bag of soil a bag of topsoil or potting mix can be a little bit heavy but this is not as heavy and the great thing is that cocoa is completely sustainable parts of the coconut that would otherwise gone to waste you guys can now use as a medium now let's get into the five things that I learned about growing in pure cocoa. First off, your plants absolutely love this stuff, man. The roots just grow super fast through this. It's an inert substance. We'll get into that later, but it really holds moisture well. And it allows for a lot of aeration, so the roots can really search through that stuff. These are just two little plants that I got, and man, you can see these roots popping through the bottom of this solo cup. Man, they absolutely love the cocoa. The cocoa stuff is super different. And you guys can see these roots. These roots are like, hey, what's going on? Bruh. Now for me, that was fantastic because that means I got a shorter veg period. I did not have to veg for as long as I usually would if I was growing in something like soil. That super fast root growth, this feels like you just can't beat it. A lot of people actually liken growing in cocoa to growing in DWC. It's a soilless medium. Like I said, there's no soil. This is cocoa. This video is brought to you by Mars Hydro where they have a variety of grow lights and grow tents for growers of all experience levels. Whether you're a small home grower or setting up a slightly bigger commercial operation, they have the tents and lights for you. They have tents for every space and need, including the new two-in-one tents. And they also have a wide variety of lights to choose from, including full-spectrum LED and the new detachable FCE series. Links to all of the products that we use on this channel, including the Mars Hydro Grow Lights, are in the description below. Be sure to use the links below to support the ICANTHC channel. You can also save a few bucks on the Mars Hydro website by using the code ICANTHC at checkout for store-wide savings. Don't forget to use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Now, back to the video. Now another massive benefit when it comes to growing in the cocoa is the increased air that the roots can have. That means you get an increased yield. You get a massive yield and a super fat yield simply because the medium is key here. The roots can grow through that medium and really perform and it's all about performance. Once your roots are happy, are healthy, bigger roots, bigger fruits. So it's all about that. Your plants can uptake the nutrients a lot better and a lot more effectively than if they were in some other sort of medium where it's just a lot more difficult for them to get there. I'm not saying they won't get it but it may 
may be just a little bit more difficult, may not be as easy, just think of it that way. Now it's not all fun and games when it comes to growing in cocoa, because like I mentioned earlier, cocoa is an inert substance. Now that means that it does not have any nutrients in there, there's literally no type of fertilization going on, you gotta do it all yourself. And on that note, one thing that you gotta do is you gotta grab this, you gotta grab the big boy, because you're gonna need some of that CalMag, man. So shout out to Crown Nutrients, this is that CalMag, I've been using this and I've also been using some of this little one which came in super handy in a jiffy this is from that mob mad farmer so shout out to mad farmer now guys we got a lot of discount codes all sorts of discount codes i can hookups definitely check out our page and you can find out all the discount codes for all the products including crunk nutrients but one thing you definitely will need guys is that calmag now it's a super great idea to buffer your cocoa a lot of people get cocoa in different ways it could be compressed or it could be ready to go sort of like what we got here but it's always a good idea to buffer your cocoa by buffering that simply means mixing calmag nutrient solution in a bucket of water and passing that through your cocoa so it can all get taken up in there just let it run out a lot of catalyzation of ions and all sorts of cation Bruh. and all sorts of cations and chemistry and biology and stuff will go on in there but it'll be good for you guys so trust me on that one. if you want to find out more about those ion exchanges definitely let me know i can do a video on it or you can just research it yourself right, but if there's one thing to take away guys calmag is key Keep that with me. CalMag is key. Say it with me. CalMag is key. Now, like I mentioned as well, the cocoa is also inert. That means it doesn't got any nutrients in there. You gotta feed them those nutrients. For me, I actually went with an organic nutrient fertilizer. In this, I threw a dry organic fertilizer. I went the top dress route. I did not mix it directly into the cocoa. I literally tried top dressing. And I found that I ran into a few problems when it came to deficiencies, just because of the different makeup of the cocoa as compared to the soil. Now, you can definitely use dry organic fertilizers, but for me, I found that using some of the liquid organic fertilizers actually works a great treat and you can find a lot of organic liquid fertilizers so definitely check those out as well now another thing that i found super important when it came to getting the best out of the cocoa i found that i had to use my ph pen yep you got to bring out those ph pens some of those cheap ones don't really work too great so you can toss those but if you got any of those blue lab ones those ones work great they're also slightly more affordable options you guys can check out but it's all about recalibration no matter what ph pen you got you got to recalibrate that shit often just to make sure that you're on point and you're not messing yourself up because with increased feedings in particular through liquid nutrients you guys need to get your water you guys need to get your water ph balanced and dialed in especially when you're watering when you're feeding if you're adding nutrients sometimes that can drop the ph so you need to know what's going on and how much and on top of that based on where you're at what part of the world country globe you're living in your ph water coming out of your tap may be different for me i'm close to 10 11 where are you guys at drop it in the comments down below and let me know now for the last thing i gotta say guys you gotta be careful cocoa has great water retention it holds a lot of water it can dry out of the top and make it look like it's not got a lot of water down there so I would say lift up your plant pot lift it up see how much water is really in there and then you can get an idea how much water you should be feeding your plants sometimes with the cocoa like I said it can dry up it can look dry up top but down there you got some water so the lift technique is foolproof man you know how much is going on in there now for me moving forward I absolutely love the cocoa I did have some issues dialing it in in terms of nutrients feeding cow mag and all that stuff but it was the first time that I grew in absolutely pure cocoa but moving forward what I think I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna veg my plants in the cocoa simply because of the super fast veg time, the explosive root growth and all that stuff. But when it comes to flour, I may shift it back to a living soil sort of nutrient mix. Bruh. Living soil nutrient mix, a living soil organic mix. So I'm gonna just make myself some sort of custom super soil and then I'm gonna transplant into that. And that way I can get the best of both worlds. Perfect. Who says you gotta do one thing one way? You can always switch it up and depending on what works for you, that's how you know what to do going on in the future. So shout out to everyone tuned in right now. There are a lot of different ways to grow, no right or wrong way to do it. A lot of people tuned in right now and know exactly what I'm talking about. Shout out to Cat Bar Jones. He does a hydro for veg and he then he switches to organics for flour. And another great tip, shout out to Colorado Joe. He actually told me this one is that he makes a sort of lasagna. And at the top you have the cocoa and down at the bottom you have some of that living soil with organic inputs. So when the roots get down there, they really get some of that nice goodness going on down at the bottom. But there's no right or wrong way to do it, guys. It's all about experimenting, finding out what works for you. So smash the like button, drop it in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys do. Let me know what you guys don't do. Have you ever grown in cocoa or something? you like is it something you don't like would you ever try it let me know i want to find out what you guys got to say smash the like hit the bell and we we'll see you on the next one peace hey.